Hello and welcome to the series of Rapid Minor videos. My name is Dr. Marcus Hoffman and I'm a lecturer at the Institute of Technology Blanchardstown and also the principal investigator of this project funded by the Irish National Digital Learning Repository. The series of Rapid Minor videos was created in close collaboration with Ralph Klinkenberg and Dr. Ingo Merswa, the two founding members of Rapid Minor. More videos as well as additional material to some videos can be found at www.rapidminorresources.com. I would now like to introduce Ralph Klinkenberg, who will talk you through this tutorial. Welcome to Rapid Miner. This introductory video demonstrates how to load and visualize data in Rapid Miner. So let's first start a new process. Specify the repository and the process name. Select your dataset. You can select it either from a file or a database or from your repository. So let's just drag and drop, in this case, from the repository. So you can directly press the Run button and look at the dataset. So the first view of the data that I see is the so-called metadata. So I see the names of the columns. I see the value types, like nominal, numeric, or and the numerical can be either real valued or integer. I see the average and standard deviation for the numerical ones, as well as the value range from smallest to largest value. And for the nominal ones, you see the most frequent value called mode and the least frequent value. And you see also all occurring values along with how often they occur. So in this case, we have a three-class problem. Each of the classes has 50 cases. Looking at the data table, you see the actual content of the data set, having the four numeric columns and the class column as listed in the metadata. And if you go to the plot view, you can start with very simple single-dimensional plots, like, for example, simple scatter plot or deviation plot or histograms. So if you just want to look at the distribution of the values, a histogram might might be your choice. So this is a distribution of values for the first attribute, distribution for the second, third and fourth attribute. And changing the number of bins you can have a more fine grained resolution. Look at them again. Looking at different Visualization, your scatter plot might be one of the first diagrams you may want to look at. Selecting, for example, two of the dimensions, you get um, an overview of the distribution along these two dimensions. And if you now use, for example, the class attribute for the coloring, you also see that these three classes can be quite well separated with only a small overlap between the green and the red cases. And now looking further into other plots, well, if you want to do a two-dimensional scatter plot and don't know which two dimensions to pick from the four dimensions, you could look at the scatter matrix, which shows you all combinations of, of pairs of attributes. And you could, for example, see that the dimensions 1 and 2 are not so helpful for distinguishing the red and the green cases, while dimensions 3 and 4 do not only separate the blue cases very well, but also help to separate the green and the red cases quite well. With blue being iris setosa, green being iris vesicular, and red being iris virginica. You can do a similar thing in three dimensions, just add one more dimension, and then just take a look if the classes are separable or if you see any patterns that you would like to see or detect in the data by turning the data. Another way of representing um, another third dimension is using the size of the points or bubbles, so called. So this might be a representation that's interesting if size plays a role. And if you don't want to use 
the third spatial dimension but just the size dimension. So taking the, the two axes x and y plus the size plus the color is actually four dimensional plot in overall. There's other diagrams that are particularly helpful for high dimensional problems. Um, like in the parallel plot for example there's one vertical line for each attribute and now for each case in the data set the values for the corresponding attributes are connected for each example in the data set. And so you can see, for example, that the um, attributes 3 and 4 help very well to distinguish the classes, while attributes 1 and 2 look more messed up and are not so helpful for distinguishing the classes. A deviation plot is very similar, but instead of a line for each example, you only have one line for each class. This has the average value for the members of that class as well as a standard deviation as a lighter color around it. So these are the major plots for simple, sim sim single and low dimensional visualizations as well as for higher di um, dimensional visualizations. If you have a high dimensional space and want to display it in two dimensions, the self-organizing maps are an interesting way to do so. They are transforming the original space, which is possibly highly dimensional, into a two-dimensional space, trying to preserve the original distance between the data points. And uh, since this is not perfectly possible, the, the true distance is expressed by the coloring. Dark blue meaning very low distance, lighter blue meaning slightly larger but still very low distance. Land color meaning much bigger distance and mountain color meaning really big distance. So the Blue points are grouped nicely together and they have a bigger distance around them before the next data points um, occur. Red and green are also separable but they're much closer to each other and actually there may be a risk of overlapping. One more thing to mention about the, the um, SOM plot, so-called self-organizing map plot, is that when you leave the plot to the top, you re-enter at the bottom. When you leave it to the left, you re-enter at the right. These are the main diagrams for simple plots. Of course, you can also have pie charts. For example, you could decide, let's group by class. Take a look at the average value for the third attribute. Select aggregation average. And it would be the average value for the, the third attribute for the three different classes. Of course, you could also simply count how many elements does each class have. Or you could select another kind of plot, like for example, 3D pie chart, a ring chart, or bar chart, expressing the similar information, like for example, the average of different um, classes. Okay, so. You can also look at distributions of the different classes and how well they help to distinguish. Like you can see here, attribute 3 helps to perfectly distinguish the blue cases and it also helps to distinguish red and green, but not as perfectly. Class blue is not such a good separator as you can see from here. For further information on RapidMiner, please go to www.rapidminerresources.com or www.rapid-i.com. If you are interested in upskilling, please go to www.itb.ie where you will find more information about our distance learning MSc in Computing Science, in Business Intelligence and Data Mining. Many thanks to the Irish National Digital Learning Repository for funding this video.